still somehow there's lots of room for complication and uh, confusion. And this is a review uh, of the properties of exponents. So uh, we have uh, five things that we're going to talk about here. I'm going to write them down first, but then we'll kind of tease them out through some fairly complicated, I think, examples. So the first is that if you multiply two powers with the same base, then what do we do to simplify that? Add the, Add the exponents. So we get x to the m plus n. And, and we can go both directions. So we don't often go right to left, but it can be done right to left as well. Secondly, if we take a power and raise back to a power, then what do we do with those exponents? Multiply. Multiply them. And we get x to the m times n power. And if we have a fraction where we have the same base, x to the m in the numerator and x to the n in the denominator, then what do we do with those exponents? Subtract them. So that's going to be x to the m minus n power. If we have two things being multiplied and then raised to a power, then what does that equal? Good. So don't, and, and just as a warning, uh, this is not a commutative property of, or a distributive property rather, of exponents. So we don't distribute the exponent over an addition or a subtraction. And this is the, the one that just kills people. This you cannot say is x to the n plus y to the n. That is not true. So you cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction. This one means they're both being multiplied and raised to a power, that they each get raised to that power. There's a big difference there. And we'll try to see some examples that, uh, I mean, is inevitably catch people because uh, people so much want that to be true, but it's not, sadly. So if you have a fraction raised to a power, and what is that equal to? Yeah, good. So both the numerator and the denominator get raised to that power. Okay, so we'll get to that in a moment. And remember our, what we do with uh, zero, negative, and fractional exponents. So uh, these are also oftentimes a source of confusion. Zero, negative, and fractional exponents. And so we know that anything to the zero power is one. one, good, not zero, but one. We know that if we have x to the negative m power, then that is one over x to the n. Good, one over x to the n, which then means that one over uh, x to the negative n is going to be x to the n. Good, so what the negative does is it changes its position in the fraction. Okay, and if you have something to uh, x to the m over n power, then what is that equal to? Good. So and we can do yeah, and we can do it either order. You're exactly right. So the denominator becomes the root, and you can either put the m in here, which means you're going to take it to the m power first, and then take the nth root, or we could take the root first, and then take the result and raise it to the m. So the order you do that in doesn't make any difference. And what we'll do a lot of times, what I'm going to try to encourage you to do is. If this base is a number and we can write it as a power of something, look to do that as a way of simplification as well. So let's see some examples of this. And let's see. 
where we are. So if we do, I'm going to put a couple of them up here. So negative two uh, to the fourth, and then negative two in parentheses to the fourth. Are those the same or different? And if they're not the same, how are they different? Give you a chance to do that. You can compare your answer with somebody next to you. So in the first one, how many negative signs are there in the expression? There's only going to be one, right? So that's negative 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Or you can say the exponent goes first, we take 2 to the fourth, then we multiply by negative 1, so the result is going to be negative 16. In this one, how many negative signs are there when you write it all out? Four. Four. So it's a negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So an even number of negatives is going to be a positive 16. Okay? So let's try a 27 to the negative 2 thirds. And we'll compare and then subtract that to a, a negative 8 to the positive 2 thirds power. So how do we sort out negatives in different places? And what does the parentheses mean, if anything. I, so there's two ways you can do this. You can do it as a radical to a power. You can also write, if you, the way I like to think of it is, if you can recognize 27 as a power of 3 and negative 8 as a power of what, 2 or negative 2, then that's another option, the one that I kind of like. But you can do it whatever way you have learned it or you see it as. And we'll talk about those. One way, this is my personal preference, but you don't have to do it this way. We'll do it, we'll come back and do it with the radicals. If I'd like to see 27 is 3 to the third raised to the negative 2 thirds power. And when you raise a power to a power, you can multiply those exponents. And when you multiply fractions, you can cancel those. So what we're going to get is 3 to the negative 2. And then 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 3 to the second. And one over three to the second is one ninth. Now, other people may do it differently. So some people uh, see this as, I don't know, is a one over, say, 27 to the positive two thirds power. And then maybe do the cube root of 27 and then square that result. I don't think anybody wants to go 27 squared first. It wouldn't be a great way to go. Uh, and then the cube root of 27 is 3, and we get to the same thing. Questions on that, or anybody do it differently than that? So, again, what I would do here on the next one is I would call that a negative 2 to the third to the 2 thirds power. And so we can cancel those uh, denominators. And now we get negative 2 to the second. So the trickiness there is that that negative 2 ends up being squared. So what we get is a positive 4. Alternatively, you could, the radical believers, uh, would do something like the cube root of negative 8 and then square that. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, and we're still going to get the 4. You could do that differently. 
because I guess you could go negative 8 squared and get 64, and then you got to get the cube root of 64, which is going to be 4 also. All right, let's try uh, something like uh, negative 16 in parentheses is e to the 3 fourths power, and then a negative 16 with no parentheses is e to the 3 fourths power. Does this make a difference? How so? So the key on the first one, whether you're doing it as an exponent or as a radical, it won't be easier to see in this case as a radical, the issue, the problem. Uh, here you have to be really on the alert that when you're trying to take an even denominator of a negative number, we're going to have a problem. Okay? Because the fourth root, like the square root of a negative, is not going to be a real number. That makes sense. There is no number. There's no real number times itself four times. It's going to be negative. So this and is not the problem. It's not a real number. That makes sense. You nod your head in fear. Are you okay, Misha? You don't look like you want to. You okay with that? Okay. Now here, because the order of operations, the exponents all going to take place before the negative arrives on the scene. And so we can do it either way. We can you know, cancel here, call this the negative of 2 to the third, and that's going to get the negative 8. We can take the fourth root of 16 to the third and then bring the negative in. So either way, we're going to get a negative 8. Is that okay? Okay, so I think it's time for you to get out of your seat and come to the board and do some of these. So we'll talk strategy perhaps first. So if we have 100, uh, x to the second, y to the fourth, all over 25, x to the third, y to the second. So a strategy might be to kind of treat this like three separate problems. Can you put that away there in case? So it's like three separate problems. You can do each one and put it together. Now, some people are... Uh, Think that you should never have an answer with a negative exponent. I'm not one of those, so I'm totally okay with a negative exponent. But just for the sake of argument, let's write your answer um, both with negative exponents and without negative exponents, so you can see that equivalence. And so I think we have one, two, four, six, seven. So let's have three or four to the board now, and then the other half will go on the next one. Make sure we all agree. 
if you read it with a negative exponent also. I think we're getting on the board anyway. We're reaching the same kind of agreement there. Because my the way I think of it, you don't have to do it this way. The way I think of it is just like three separate problems. So the 100 divided by 25 is the 4. I just subtract the exponents. That's the way I took the argument initially. So that would probably be my first answer there. And then we can get rid of the negative exponent by adjusting the into the denominator. But some people I'm seeing kind of do it the other way around. They're canceling the two with the, the three in the denominator and getting to this place first and then moving there. And that's fine. It's up to you. Okay. Hang on to your marker or and you can take your seat and we'll bring the other half up to do another problem. See if we can uh, get it ever more complicated. So the only thing that's not okay is to leave a negative exponent in a denominator. That is not acceptable. So you need to write it, you know, kind of like in one line where you can have negative exponents or positive exponents, or you can get rid of all negative exponents. But never is it okay to have negative exponents in a denominator. Tell them the third. All right. <laughs> Try to read it again. Opportunity there. Sure, they're okay to pay before you abandon them. Okay, so uh, I think no matter how we do it, we're going to have to deal with these powers, two powers first, and multiply the exponent. Uh, different people have different strategies here. Mine is I would just uh, combine the y's, so the 4 plus negative 4 is 0, so y to 0 is 1. It just gets absorbed, because 1 times anything is anything. And I would think of this as just we subtract exponents. 6 minus negative 1 is 7, and that's how I'm going to get to there. I know other people like to move the negative exponent up, and so they would think of that as x to the sixth times x to the first, and that's fine too, and we get to the same place. And make sure we understand, I'm okay with the x to the seventh over two, but I want you to make sure you understand and see that you could pull that apart as one half times x to the seventh. Okay? Cool. So let's do, I'm going to do one together first before we uh, bring the next group up, because I want to do one with radicals. We haven't really talked about that. And then uh, I'll give you one to try on your own. So if we have, say, a square root of 48, x to the third, y to the fourth, z to the seventh. So we can think of this as, uh, you know, doing each of these independently. I wouldn't write it out this way, but you could. So I would think of that as a square root of 48, a square root of x to the third, a square root of y to the fourth, square root of uh, z to the seventh. And this 
part would probably just take place in my mind. I wouldn't actually write all that down. That gets pretty tedious. The 48 rib we want to break down as much as we can. So we're looking for perfect squares. If you're really good at it, you can see it as 16 times 3. If not, you can do it in stages, right? So you can look at that as it's okay to say that's 4 times 12 first and simplify the square root of 4 and then see another 4 in the 12 and call that uh, 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2 times that 2 makes that a 4 square root of 3. But you can shortcut that if you saw that as 16 times 3. And again, this part can go on in your head. You would have to write that out for me. I know some people learn this as doing factor trees, and you're welcome to do that. I think that gets really annoying and time consuming. So I'm going to try to encourage you to just recognize perfect squares. Uh, you know, we don't want to spend a ton of time doing this because we're going to need our time to do other things in general. But it's up to you. Accuracy is more important than speed, but at some point in time, it just gets really irritating. Now, the same thing is true here. We can think of this x to the third as a square root of x squared times the square root of x. And then we're going to call for now the square root of x squared will just be x, leaving the other x inside. So now it's growing. So that what we're ultimately going to get is anything that can come outside of the radical. And then the ones that can't make it out are stuck left inside there. So now the x that came out of the radical is joining that 4. And the x that couldn't come out of the radical is still left inside, and it's a 3 that couldn't exit the uh, radical. Now, here you can think of this a couple of ways. It is correct to think of it as the square root of y squared times the square root of y squared, which is going to be y times y, which is y squared. Also, thinking big picture, the square root is like a 1 half power. And so what we're really doing is dividing that exponent by 2. And that's why that gets to come outside as a y squared, because we can do that more efficiently as we get better at this. Uh, the square root of z to the seventh, again, you can write it out in uh, what seems to me to be um, a lot of work that is kind of annoying, but you could correctly call it z squared times z squared times z squared times z, if you're told in a hurry, that z times z times z is z cubed. Or you can also think of it, I guess, you know, as dividing by 2. And what goes in there evenly is the z to the third. And the remainder, that one left over, is the one that can't get outside of the, the radical. At any rate, you want to end up in the same place, you know, however you might want to think of it. All right? Does that sort of make sense? Hopefully this is review. Okay. Up on the board, those that haven't, can I erase that? Or you want me to leave it up there for a moment? All right, hearing no objections, let's do square root of, and let's say 32, x to the fifth, y to the eighth, z to the eleventh, and see if we can simplify that. I didn't get to the really interesting ones, but we'll have to time it up to see those. You taking the remainder. Answers up on the board if you need to see it. Prepare your answer with that.